It's the twist. They told me I twist and I told them I can twist. Cooking is creativity. It's, it's expressing yourself. And I like to express myself with the very ingredients that I love. And one of our favorite ingredients is Zed Zaytun. Tell me what we're going to cook today. I'm going to make lamb, except I'm not going to make a whole lamb. I certainly don't have enough people to feed a whole lamb today. And not only because of the situation we're in, but let's say you're a person who's in an apartment on their own, you're living by yourself. Why should you miss out on the celebratory aspect of this? And because you can't make a big lamb. So I decided I was going to go for a rack of lamb. That's, okay. That's that's as pragmatic and instructive <laughs> and thoughtful as you can be. Um, no, that's incredible because so many times I miss certain dishes and yeah. because I'm alone or I'm living alone in New York and I, whatever, you know, people are busy as, as sure. this is the case. You got to cook for less. And so you're yeah. right. It doesn't make sense. Exactly. So I took the basically, I mean, the rack of lamb is no is nothing to uh, goth about. I mean, it's the it's the Cadillac of the, the meat. It's the most tender. And um, I have it here uh, just to show you. It's been um, French trimmed, uh, cleaned all uh, between the bones mm -hmm. and uh, removed all the excess fat. And um, it's ready to go. Now, um, before I do the lamb, I'm going to start first by doing the dish, the side dish, or one of the side components that go with the dish. And I'm gonna do, instead of rice, again, I'm a little non-traditional today, I'm gonna do potatoes, okay, batata. All right, so I'm gonna put the meat aside. When, when, when are potatoes a bad idea? Never. Never. So what I like to do, Ahmed, in my cooking, I mean, you can say, I mean, is this a traditional Arabic Palestinian dish? Someone will tell me no. No, it's not. My mother didn't make this. Uh, my grandmother never made this. Maybe not in the way that I'm going to do it, N not in this context, but still I am using ingredients and flavors and spices that are the the melody of, of Arabic food. It is, right? I, it's, I, yeah. <laughs> I, it's, it's the twist. It's the twist, exactly. They told me I, twist and I told them I can twist. Um, cooking is uh, creativity. It's it's expressing yourself, and I like to express myself with the very ingredients that I love. And one of our favorite ingredients is shu zed zaytun. That's yeah. right. Yeah, zaytun hayalla zed zaytun Palestine. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to in this um, tray that I've started to heat. Okay, this is a cast iron tray. Here, I'm going mm -hmm. to uh, put the olive oil basically to cover the surface. Mm -hmm. Here, I have cut potatoes. I know they look a little fancy, but because this is a celebration, we went all out today. We went fancy. <laughs> so I actually cut them all to be the same size, uh, round, using a cookie cutter. And I even did beveled edges. I went that far. Yes. You don't oh. have to do this. Yes. Suzanne is not playing around. No, no, I'm serious. So, <laughs> I mean, you could do this or you could just uh, leave it as is. It, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it's very important when you're making potatoes and you want to saute them to get a, a brown uh, surface to be to make sure that after you've washed your potatoes that you dry them really well, Ahmed, so that mm. there's no water. So then it makes the contact and gets nice and crispy. That's a rookie mistake I used to make. So oh, I yeah? appreciate Sure, yes, and still do make if I'm honest. Oh. So probably not after this conversation. <laughs> no, no, we're get, we we're gonna change things. And then I like to also incorporate batata halwi, which is sweet potato, and that's mm. just to give you a contrast of textures and colors. Okay, so I'm Amazing. gonna put in a couple more of these. All right, mm -hmm. that. I'm gonna just turn off the heat a little, bit, turn down the heat, and basically that's it. So I'm looking for this to brown on one side. And okay. it's, as soon as it's brown on one side, I'm going to turn it over and let it brown on the second side. And then as soon as I'm there, they've browned, I'm going to introduce um, garlic and mm -hmm. I'm going to put in a little bit of za'atar or mm. thyme as it's known in, uh, in English. Okay. Right. And if you don't like uh, thyme, you could certainly use rosemary. You could use tarragon, any kind of herb that would flavor the potatoes. Because the potatoes, you know, are very bland. So yeah. they need a lot of help, right? Right. right. Yeah. You know, so, you, 
Go on, keep going, please. I'm just going to mash my garlic. I'm going to actually keep it in its peel. And the reason why I do that is because I don't want the uh, garlic to burn. All right. So it's going to uh, let its flavors come through, but the, the garlic is going to stay uh, protected and insulated inside the peel. So I can just throw that inside and that is going to flavor my oil and ultimately, of course, my potatoes. Okay. I'm still looking. They're still not brown. We're waiting. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of butter again, and just really just for some added flavor for these potatoes. All right. Now you can see, Ahmed, you can see how nice and caramelized they are, correct? Yep, yep, yep. yep. They're nice. Now bring it closer to the camera. There you go. See? Yes, 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 yes. Nice and brown, okay? So that's as far as we're gonna go with the batata. Basically, this is ready. Now, of course, the potatoes are not cooked yet. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is add some nice hot chicken stock and I'm going to pour that directly inside. That is music in the kitchen, Ahmed. That's true. Okay, that is music. All right. So turn off the heat here. And I am basically putting in enough stock to cover it halfway. Okay, yeah, that's what right. I'm after. So it's just halfway. All right, and then from here, I'm gonna take this tray and I'm going to put it in an oven that's already on at 375 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 190 yeah. degrees Celsius. So I'm going to take a little bit of saffron with my hands and I'm just going to rub it with my fingers. And you know, saffron is a tricky thing. Don't put too much mm -hmm. because then it would taste like medicine. If mm -hmm. you put just the right amount, there, there is this beautiful, subtle flavor that is really beautiful, but um, you, you, you have to be restrained. You can't overdo Protest. it. And if you don't like saffron, leave it out, right? You know, everybody is, uh, is different. So now it's going to go back to the oven with its saffron in it. Okay. All right. We're going to move on to the lamb now. Okay. So the main event. So <laughs> here I have my rack of lamb and these come in uh, eight bones usually that's pretty standard they're connected eight bones i just slice them in half four bones each okay, okay. so just to make it easy to to work with and maneuver and i'm going to use this tray and what i'm going to do because the um the lamb is going to be coated with a beautiful herb and nut Rust. So this isn't just rack of lamb. There's going to be a beautiful fragrant herb nut crust that is Arabic from beginning to end. Like when you bite into it, you think, my God, where did I taste this? Everything yes. about it is yes. something that's familiar, okay? But maybe not in this context. So I've sort of married the two together. So we start off with the rack of lamb that I said, like I've told you, it's been cleaned, it's mm -hmm. dry. And another thing you have to remember when you're cooking meat, whether it's lamb or any kind, make sure that your meat comes to room temperature before you work from it. Like you don't take it from the refrigerator and it's right. ice cold and then you start cooking. You, you know, it, it ruins the texture. You won't get, it won't cook evenly. It has to be at room temperature. So now Got that it. this is at room temperature, um, I'm going to put on some milih. Okay. So I'm going to sprinkle milih. And I always sprinkle milih with a little love. <laughs> always. 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 And love is always part of my dishes. Sometimes it's milah, sometimes it's pepper. Either way, it comes from my hands and uh, I, I put some love into it. This you're, is- you're, you're giving Salt Bay a uh, run for his money. Oh, I don't know who? If... who? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is what's next, pepper? Yeah, exactly. This is pepper, yes. This is filfil, aswad. Right. All right, so salt and pepper, Ahmed. Now I'm not going to go crazy with spices on this because there's a real flavorful crust that's gonna go on later. So I'm going to turn on my stove here and get this pan nice smoking hot, okay? Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, I'm going to take my zed zetun, okay? You don't, you don't know how many Americans I have taught the word zed zetun. <laughs> I could tell, I could tell, that's great. All right, so I pick up my, um, my racks of lamb and I'm going to start by, this is nice and hot right now, I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil here. Great. Okay. And then 
I'm going to basically sear it. So I'm just, I just want, just like I did with the batata, I want to just caramelize the surface. So I'm not cooking it all the way through. Get ready for this music in the kitchen. It's about to happen again. There it is. <laughs> the best sound. That's the best. Okay. There it is. And then I'm going to put the other one in and this is going to fit exactly three. It's perfect. Awesome. Here goes number three. So I'm putting the meat side down first, okay? And mm -hmm. by doing this and caramelizing the meat, I'm also introducing flavor to the meat. I could mm -hmm. easily skip this, but the meat will get more steamed and boiled. It won't have that sweet caramelization. So mm -hmm. every step matters. It really does. So I'm going to go to the first one here, and that one should be, you see that, Ahmed? Yes. How nice and caramelized it is already. So yeah. I'm just going to turn it over onto the other side. And same with the other one and the third one. Okay. So mm -hmm. just getting them nice and brown. And then what I do, I just keep moving the meat around. After it's uh, finished on this side, I'm actually going to turn it and let it also caramelize on the ends. So you don't want to even leave out the ends. Everything is going to get a really nice sear. Okay? Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn off the heat now. So this is off. All right. I went to the oven to check on my batata, and mm -hmm. it is done. And, the, and how do I know that my potato is done? How do you know? I take a knife. Well, right. I take you a knife poke. and I'm going to poke through. And if there's no resistance and it just goes through like butter, right. which it does. Okay, there you go. <laughs> no resistance whatsoever. All right. It's perfect. Now, how did I make this crust? Um, I put in garlic, lemon zest, okay. parsley. Okay cilantro fresh okay like a handful of everything cilantro parsley lemon zest salt pepper paprika cardamom allspice and cinnamon okay those are the spices that's, that's the like spices. as palestinian as it gets if you exactly. ask me exactly. I mean. that's the bouquet that's the palestinian yeah bouquet of flavors, right? That's true. So those are all inside here, Ahmed. And of course, the star ingredient and garlic, I did mention garlic. Um, yeah. The star ingredient is pistachios. Fusto halabi. Hello. Okay. So here I have some fusto halabi that's been ground. Mm -hmm. So that has been incorporated also into this mix. So all this is combined together. I also added in some... Um, uh, crust, not the crust, but the inside of the crust of bread, soft, and also in the food processor mixed it and just added a little bit of butter, okay? And butter really just the, like glue, just to put it together. Here is going to be a beautiful crust that's going to sit on our lamb, mm. okay? And the pistachios are not toasted, they're actually raw. And they have okay. to be raw because if they're toasted and you're going to bake them in the oven, they're going to cook too much. Burn. Burn. Exactly. And we don't want to burn. Now, our meat is half cooked right now. So we're just basically going to finish cooking it. Now, I can just place the crust on top of the lamb as is like this. But um, because, because um, it needs a little bit of glue to adhere to it, I'm going to add on top a little bit of one of classic Arabic ingredients, and that is the bisrumman. That's what I figured, yeah. The bisrumman. And what is the bisrumman? It is pomegranate molasses. So basically, I'm using this as glue. So I'm going to just drizzle. Makes sense. Ever so lightly, okay, on top of the meat side, not the bone side, okay? Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. also going to add, other than it being glue, it's also going to add a beautiful um, acidity as well. It's a, like mm -hmm. a, a nice little tang, which is, which is beautiful. Any dish benefits from acidity whether it's lemon or vinegar or, or, or pomegranate molasses. Then I'm going to use my hands and I'm going to pick up some of this crust and just press it. I, I hope you can see. I'm sure you can. Mm -hmm. I can. Okay. And I'm just going to press really, really hard and really fill as mm -hmm. much as you 
can. You see how it's adhering? Yeah, like it, forming along it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's moist. So everything gets stuck on top. And what you're creating here is a nice, um, uh, Yanni, like a, like a little jacket. You're, you're, you're basically dressing your, um, your lamb with a nice green, beautiful crust. So you can imagine when this is cooked in the end, um, this crust is going to get nice and crunchy and it's mm. going to be a beautiful foil to the sweet lamb. Now, my lamb is ready to go into the preheated oven, okay? And I keep it like that, crust side up, all mm -hmm. right? The crust is facing up. So I'm going to take this tray now and put it in the oven and let it finish cooking. Now, depending on your oven, because ovens are different, it may take a little less or a little longer. Um, usually, this takes about 15 minutes in my oven to finish cooking. And it also depends on how how much you want it cooked. Like, do you want well done a uh, rack of lamb? I hope mm -hmm. not, but mm -hmm. some people do. So you leave it a little longer. I like my lamb to be that medium pink yeah. inside, so it's nice and soft. And the temperature, when we will check it with the with the uh, with the what do you call it the um, thermometer, and mm -hmm. it should be somewhere between 130, 35 to 140. Anywhere in between there is for me the best way to eat lamb. But you Perfect. cook it the way you like to cook it, okay? So off we go to the oven. You could do anything. It doesn't have to be what I chose to put with this dish, but I just find the combination of these three, the lamb with the potato that is nice and starchy, so, so there's something to sort of bite into after the, the piece of meat, and then having a pop of something that's acidic, like a tomato, it's just the nice, balance of flavors like it's you know harmony in your mouth that's the way i see it so what i've chosen is these beautiful cherry tomatoes that are inherently sweet okay and um i kept them on the vine okay which just means that they're going to look really pretty you don't have to do that and all i'm going to do for grilling these tomatoes and all i'm doing is basically searing them so all that's going to happen is just basically a little bit of olive oil and I'm going to sear them. I'm not aiming to cook them and turn them into mush. I just want them to blister around so that they become soft on the inside and warm so that when you slice into them, you're going to get a burst. Okay, that's what it is, a burst of freshness. So that's really what I'm after. I'm going to check. Before I go that, I'm just going to take my thermometer here and I'm going to go check on my meat. It may seem obvious, but how can you check when the meat's ready? Well, I timed it first, so I set the timer for 15 minutes. So that's my guideline. 15 minutes, I know it's going to take 15 minutes to cook. So no guessing. That's, that's, that's sort of the best way to ensure that your meat is going to be spot on every single time. This is the trick of all chefs in restaurants. Nobody takes and guesses over there to have your meat the way it is, they are timing it. And they're- Pro tips, they're good to know, it. good to know. Exactly, exactly. All right, so back to my pan that's hot. And then I'm going to pick up my tomatoes as is and, oh, where's that sizzle? There it is. I'm going to uh, sprinkle on just a little bit of salt Turn down the heat a little bit. It doesn't have to be at high, just about medium. I'm gonna bring it up close to the camera just so you can see. Sure. See how yes. it's getting nice and blistered? Here is the lamb. Wow. Top that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Teasing me. No, that's that's as good as lamb gets, I think. Yeah, this is it. Okay, I'm gonna put it right here. Now, what I do before I serve it and cut into it, just like I would with any meat, I take some foil, foil, okay, and cover it, or as they say in the industry, tent it, okay? So basically what you're doing is just kind of insulating it lightly. You're not covering it so that it's, you're gonna build steam. You just want to, it to remain nice and warm and hot, and by allowing it to rest, all those beautiful juices that are living inside this gorgeous piece of lamb are gonna stay where they're supposed to be.
If I was to take a knife right now immediately and take this piece of meat and slice right into it, all that beautiful liquid, that juice, okay, is all going to pour out and it's going to leave your meat dry and tasteless. All right, so our meat has been resting for 10 minutes, okay, 10, 15 minutes. I'm just going to bring it here and show you. Voila, that's what it looks like. And this is this is what it's all about. This is the this is the money right now, okay? So we're going to reveal the inside of this lamb. Look at that. What do you think? I mean, you described it earlier as <laughs> the pink perfect. It's like per pink perfection. Now, I also did um, uh, behind the scenes. I made sort of like a a sauce using I, w lamb stock onions, carrots as flavor, and uh, cooked it till it got really nice and thick. And I also added uh, pomegranate uh, juice, okay? So I'm echoing the pomegranate that was here and the pomegranate that is sort of sweet and sour. So I'm just gonna put a little puddle here, okay? So that's my little puddle, okay? And then I'm going to take one of these potatoes. This is why I wanted three. I wanted to create somehow a little teepee. Okay, and like I said, some of it will fall. That's okay, all right? And then I'm going to take one of my grilled tomatoes and just put it here on the side. Okay, just like that. I mean, there are no words, really. <laughs> <laughs> just saliva. <laughs> accumulating in my mouth <laughs> and that's it well the generosity certainly is legendary much like yourself i mean you've been so generous with your time and i can just tell how much care you put into this uh this conversation so thank you i really do appreciate it we really do appreciate it and you know with that, I know you uh, already gave us your final words, but if there's anything else you want to leave our audience with, any final words about Palestinian cooking, about this dish, anything at all on your mind. Never stop attempting at, to make the dishes that you remember. Don't let them sit on a shelf and be forgotten. Um, bring them out and cook them. I know in the day of now where things are busy and people are, you know, they, 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 they quickly resort to boiling pasta and putting sauce on it, which is fine. But our foods, uh, we need to keep them alive uh, and, and they won't live unless we actually cook them. And people, our children, are not going to remember these dishes if we don't actually go into the kitchen and make them. So that taste the child has to acquire a taste for that food and they won't unless you cook it and involve your children with it. You can defend your cause and your identity in many ways. And of course, you know, the politics of it, they're, they're, everything is politics, food is politics. Uh, the fact that I say this is a Palestinian dish, I've created a political uh, statement, you know, where, where people are trying to wipe you off the face of this earth. I'm saying, no, I am here, I exist, this is my food. This is my story. They can steal the food, you know who I'm talking about, but they can't take the story. They don't have the story. Right. They don't have the history. That's ours. And we need to, you know, continue it. We need to perpetuate that all the time. We, we need to honor it. It's um, been such a privilege, Walla, and an honor to have a front row seat into your kitchen. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. And yeah, they're teasing me, the guys on the WhatsApp group. They're like, you're getting good at this interviewing thing. You made this so easy. Thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you so much.